I was just the 11.30 anorexic in her day. Hi YouTube people. I've got no idea. Why does it always do that just as I start filming? I have had a real shitter of a week and I thought, why not share it with you? So I'm on my new camera. I'm gonna say something first off. I'm wearing makeup. I got a new camera. This is my first time filming on it. So hi new camera. I feel a bit weird looking into a lens like this. I'm used to my phone. I feel like there might be little fairies dancing inside this great big lens staring at me. Ooh. My new camera is kind of really zoomy and um, whizzy and I was like shit I better put some makeup on. But as I've spoken about before on videos I struggle with wearing makeup like a lot of makeup because I'm like you can't polish a turd and all of that and I feel undeserving of makeup because I'm just grotesque. Yeah. I don't feel very comfortable, but I'm just gonna work through that because I can't actually see what I look like. I can just see like a blurry thing, so I can't actually see my physical features. That's a good thing. I've had a real shitter of a week. I was blackmailed into having an appointment with a psychiatrist. I haven't seen somebody from the mental health services for about four years, and my neurologist, who is lovely, basically wanted me to see somebody from the eating disorder services just as a one-off to see if there was anything that they could offer as a different perspective about my feet um, as obviously it was caused by my eating disorder. I tried to get out of it um, and that's where the whole kind of blackmailing thing came in as in uh, if you don't go then we'll section you. I think it's fair to say that she pretty much lived up to all my memories of how shit both eating disorder professionals and psychiatrists are. I'm seen to be, and I was seen to be, non-compliant by um, kind of medical professionals and mental health professionals, both now because I won't see anyone and when I was seeing them because I have an opinion. Um, and because they just didn't know what to do with me. She proved exactly why I have such a problem with eating disorder services in particular by treating me as just the 11.30 anorexic. Not even a person, not even a human being, let alone Charlotte. I was just the 11.30 anorexic in her day. And that's kind of what this video is about. She she put words into my mouth. She was trying to twist what I said to try and fit this stereotypical anorexic image to try and fit into a nice little box that she had from one of her fucking books that she was on maybe on her fucking iPad that she sat there tapping away on instead of actually listening to what I had to say. A perfect example, um, I was actually, um, the place that she is the head psychiatrist at, I was an inpatient at um, several years ago and the only reason I agreed to see her in the first place was I said I wouldn't go there, I would only see her if she came out to me knowing full well that that wouldn't happen and obviously my neurologist arranged for a way for it to happen because he came she came to his clinic dumbass charlotte didn't think that would happen my first day on this inpatient stay um i was taken outside by my one-to-one -one nurse and she just casually said to me what's your weight and i was like um, you know, a bit uncomfortable because it's not, it shouldn't just be like a casual question like that. I told her and she just goes, well, that's not very low, is it? And I was like, I am five foot 11. My BMI is this. 
And she suddenly went, oh, but you should be on bed rest then. So that kind of is one of the things that kind of started a very, very bad relationship. I well, know that was the second thing that started the very bad relationship with that particular eating disorder service. So I told this psychiatrist that, and she said to me, so the main problem that you had is the fact that we put you on bed rest. And I said, no, the main problem that I had is the fact that one of your nurses told me that my weight wasn't very low. And she was like, oh, oh well, well, not everyone's perfect, are they? I was like, and I was like, you didn't listen to what I said. You were just trying to find the anorexic thing in there. Like, oh, well, she obviously had a problem with being on bed rest and not being able to exercise. No, that wasn't the problem. I wasn't the one at fault. The nurse was a complete and utter dick wank. She also tricked me into eating meat whilst I was in there. So she really was a complete and utter dick wank. But anyway, that's another story. And I can't remember how it came up, but she, she was looking through my notes and she was going on about malnutrition. And she said, and a lack of B vitamins from your vegetarian diet has caused this peripheral neuropathy and the problems with your feet. And I said, um, I've been a vegetarian since I was like nine or 10. I'm fairly certain that the peripheral neuropathy and the problems with my feet is probably more to do with the chronic anorexia and the not eating for three months. And she said, oh, where does it say that? And when was this? And I was like, oh, you really are a dickhead, aren't you? I think just because I'm not seen as the average anorexic, I don't have, I definitely don't have a lot of qualities. And just because I've been told I'm not like, the average anorexic. What is the average anorexic? That's a horrible term. I'm sorry, I shouldn't use that term. But I'm seen as difficult. And I've always been seen as difficult. I've always known what will and won't work for me. Not just, I mean, not just in terms of my eating disorder, but in terms with the other illnesses that I've had. If I know something isn't going to work, what is the point in what is the point in pursuing it? Professionals will always say, well, you're still ill, so you're wrong. But my argument is that I don't want to be alive. This woman didn't get it. She was like, well, you have depression, it can be cured. And I was like, fuck off. I could tell that she wasn't impressed by what I was saying because she questioned why I hadn't been sectioned. Oops. Yeah, it really sucks having a type of OCD where you can't lie. That really, really sucks. I, I don't know if I've spoken much about it, I can't remember. But part of my OCD is I actually can't physically lie because it's kind of like Jim Carrey in Liar Liar. If I say the lie, then I believe that it is true. So like if I were to say, oh yes, I have eaten this, then I believe that I actually have, or I feel like I have. Um, or if I were to say that I actually weigh more than I am, then I feel like I then actually will weigh that. So I actually can't physically lie about things. And bear in mind, this, this woman is from the same eating disorder service who, when I went to for an assessment, um, at a BMI of, 15, I was told these exact words, you are thin, but not thin enough. You can go on the waiting list and if you carry on not eating, by the time you get to the waiting list, you will warrant treatment. So the woman tried to say, even though this woman wasn't there in that appointment, she tried to say, oh, I'm sure what she meant is you can try and have outpatient treatment. I said, no, that is what she said. She said, no, no, I'm sure. She... And I said, no, no, that is what she actually said. My mum will back me up. And my mum did back me up. Not all anorexics lie. I kept saying things that she just wouldn't believe and she kind of had to look to my mum to back me up as if she couldn't believe that an anorexic would actually tell the truth. This is why, you know, my GP is 
I was going to say frustrated, but it, he's kind of pissed off the fact that I won't engage with eating disorder services. You know, I'm sure there are, there are people, I'm sure there are services out there and people who have better, better relationships with, with their teams, but I have only ever had bad experiences. Um, There were other things that were said in the appointment. After the whole vegetarian causing your peripheral neuropathy thing, I was just like, you know what, woman? I was kind of gonna just not be aggressive, but then I was like, fuck this. Went after her and I was just like attacking her service because I wasn't gonna bring up all of the shit things that they did to me whilst I was in there. And, um, the things that were said to me, but I bought it all up and she, as I said, she kind of twisted my words and didn't believe me, even when I had backup and it's like, apart from at the end when she started going on about trying to section me, she didn't look up once from her iPad and I know that she was kind of making notes and stuff, but it's like, I'm a fucking human being. my first appointment with a psychiatrist and I made a joke. I think it was before my eating disorder, I think it was when I had ME. And I think they said something like, Charlotte, why do you think you're ill? I said, oh, I broke a mirror last year, so I've got so many years bad luck. And they said, Charlotte, why did you feel the need to break a mirror? And I was like, it was a joke. It's like, people with mental illnesses do have personalities, you know? That's happened to me more times than I can mention. I've sat there in meetings and if my mum's been in there and I've made a joke and it's kind of like been not seen. And also because I'm such a, I've got such a sarcastic personality. If I say something sarcastically, I forget that I'm sat in a room with psychiatrists or whatever and it kind of goes over the head, I'll look, I'll look at my mum and it's like whoosh. Sorry if this video didn't really make much sense. We should make a stand. Yeah, I want everyone to go into their next appointment. I'm not, I don't have a next appointment, like fuck. I want everyone to go into their next appointment and go, my name is, whatever your name is, Bob or Nancy or Florence or Squashy pug face. My name is Charlotte. Um, I'm not the 11.30 anorexic. I'm a human being and I'd really appreciate it if you could treat me as one. Thanks. So, in the middle of filming this video I had a massive argument with my mum. So I'm going to go and try and do something not self-destructive. Probably climb under my duvet. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. It's probably a bit weird and bitty, I don't know. I didn't really know where I was going with it. We're all human beings. Well, unless you work for the eating disorder services. In that case, you're all fucking trolls. In that case, I'm fairly sure you're Satan. Um, so yeah. Thank you for watching. Um, please like this video if you like it. Bye. Oh shit.